Hey guys, Blue Commander here, and today I'm going to be introducing to you the concept of the two-phase method in operations research for solving linear programming problems. Now, previously in, I've shown you how we go about solving um, linear programming problems in the presence of artificial variables by using the Big M method. Uh, this, this video is going to cover the two-phase method. Well, firstly, I'd, I'd just like to remind you what is the purpose of us using these techniques, using the Big M method or using the two-phase method. Our purpose is rather simple. We have one singular goal. And that goal is to find an initial feasible solution. So, the reason for us doing this is so that we can then go off and start the simplex method and run through the simplex method as usual. The big M method attempts to do this by penalizing the artificial variables being any value other than zero. The two-phase method, so two-phase method, it does this by have by having two phases. The first one's purpose is to reduce the value of the artificial variables to zero. And then after you have done this by carrying out the simplex method as usual what will happen is you will delete the columns of the artificial variables and then you will restart the simplex method using the base the, f the solution that was given to you by phase one all right so that's what the first method entails it entails reducing the value of the artificial variables to zero this is equivalent to saying we want the minimum value of artificial variable 1 and artificial variable 2 added to each other the summation of those two that is our goal is to find the minimum of the sum of the artificial variables and we already know that the minimum of the sum is equivalent to saying the maximum of the addition of the differences or the negative values of both of these so negative so minimizing a1 bar plus a2 bar is equivalent to maximizing negative a1 bar negative a2 bar so that's what the purpose of the first phase of the two phase method is it's to reduce the value of the artificial variables to zero and then we delete the columns of the of the artificial variables so we're only left with the slack variables excess variables and the normal decision variables and then we restart the simplex method using the solution that was given to us by phase one. Well, then you might ask me this question. Well, what happens if the phase one method does not reduce the summation of the artificial variables to zero? Now, that's a very important condition. If any of the artificial variables do not reduce, to zero then no solution exists for our linear programming problem okay 
So this is, this is everything that's entailed by the first phase of the two-phase method. The second phase, so phase two, it involves A, we rewrite the objective function as it was first stated to us. Then B, using the solution from phase one, write the tableau in proper form. Okay, and then C, it's simply carry out the simplex method as usual as usual and then voila you'll have your solution if one exists so this is just the, the introduction to the two-phase method the first phase reduce the value of the of the artificial variables to zero which is akin to saying minimize the sum of the artificial variables which is equivalent to maximizing negative the, the, the summation of the negative values of those artificial variables. Then, after you have done this, you've run the phase one method, and only if the artificial variables, all of them, are reduced to zero, then we can go on to phase two, which we simply rewrite the objective function that was stated um, in the question, and then you use the phase one solution as your starting or your initial basic feasible solution and then you carry out the simplex method as usual okay so the example that I'll be discussing with you in this video is to minimize z subject to 0 0.4 um, minimize z which is equal to 0 0.4 x1 plus 0 0.5 x2 subject to the following three constraint equations and we can see that this is a less than or equal to we have an equal sign and a greater than or equal to so we know that if it's simply a less than or equal to sign, we will simply add a slack variable. So we're going to add S1, which will be our slack variable. In this scenario, we have an equal to sign. So there's no need to subtract an excess variable, but we do have to add an artificial variable. I'm going to call it A1 bar. And in the presence of a greater than or equal to sign, we have to subtract an ex excess variable, denoted E1, and we have to add an artificial variable, which I'll denote as A2. Now, the, using the two-phase method, our first equation, or our objective function, if you will, which will be present in row 0, will be to minimize A1 bar plus A2 bar. Now, this is equivalent to saying we're going to maximize negative A1 bar, negative A2 bar. So our, our row 0 equation, or our objective function, is going to be negative, negative A1, negative A2. And then the rest of our problem is simply the transformed, the transformed tableau. So when I write this out in the proper form that the table will be shown, we first remember to write down our columns. We have x1, x2, slack variable 1, excess variable 1, artificial variable 1, artificial variable 2, and then the right-hand sides. So, row 0 will be 0 apart from these two elements. They are going to be negative 1 and negative 1 respectively, with the right-hand side set equal to 0. And then we will write our uh, columns as shown here. And, and do note that I use decimal commas instead of decimal points. Plus 1. Alright, so this is how our first, how your table will start off. So you're going to be 
minima maximizing negative a1, negative a2. So this is what's shown in row 0 here. Then in row 1 to 2 you have your augmented or your transformed inequalities here from these three equations. Transformed by augmenting them with the slack var necessary slack variables and excess variables and artificial variables. So now I'll take you through running you through to finding a, a basic feasible solution with the first phase of the, the two-phase method. This table is almost ready to be used to start off the, f the first phase of the simplex method but I have not yet included the basic variables. So our basic variables are going to be the slack variable, the artificial variables, a1 and a2 bar. So for that to be the case, remember that any row 0 element of a basic variable has to be 0. So we need to go and transform this equation. So what we're going to do, we're going to say row 0 plus row 2 plus row 3 to become row 0 new. Okay, so what happened is I, I've finally written this table, but this table is not yet the correct one that we have to use to start off the simplex method. What you'll notice is that the basic variables S1, A1 and A2 they they do not have all zero entries in the first row or the zeroth row if you want to call it that so we have to transform this what we'll do we'll say row 0 plus row 2 plus row 3 to make row 0 new so we run through this operation so we've made it now into the necessary form of negative 1.1 negative 0 0.9 0 1 0 0 negative 12 the reason why I've multiplied through by negatives is because we said that we're minimizing a, the sum of a1 plus a2. This is equivalent to, maximi to minimizing z, z, which is equivalent to maximizing negative z, which is equal to negative a1, negative a2. So, we are now in a form, this table is now in the correct form for us to be able to run the simplex method. And we run it, so the first iteration, we notice that x1 will enter the basis because its row 0 entry is the most negative and the variable that will leave the basis is s is s1 and as we run through you notice the second iteration here x2 enters the basis a2 bar leaves the basis the third iteration we have x slack variable 1 entering the basis and artificial variable 1 leaving the basis and then our the first phase of the two-phase method is concluded with this following tableau and what this means is that we have to go now and delete the columns of a1 bar and a2 bar these are the last two columns respectively these two so we're going to delete them in our next iteration so I will copy this table again and then I'll show you what we do now so what we notice with this table is we have to eliminate a1 bar and a2 bar. These these columns can be simply left out. And then we're going to reintroduce the original objective function, which was to minimize 0.4x1 plus 0.5x2, which is equivalent to saying maximize negative 0.4x1, negative 0.5x2. So when we have done this, our new, our new tableau that we will be starting off the two-phase method is going to be given by And do note that we need to transform this again because some of the columns of our basic variables are not zero. So our basic variables are x1, x2 and slack variable 1. 
So we're going to again have to transform this. So we're going to have to say row 0 minus 0 0.4 row 1 minus 0 0.5 row 2 and this is our final solution of the two-phase method. And if you note the value of z, so we, we said that we're going to have negative z is equal to whatever the right-hand side is, which is negative 5.25. So that says that our maximum value of negative z is going to be negative 5.25. That means that the minimum value of that we can attain is 5.25, and our optimal solution is given by in terms of the original decision variables x1 and x2 is given by x1 is 7.5 and x2 is 4.5 so that's how we run through it's quite a long-winded process it's it's in my opinion it's I do not prefer solving these problems with the two-phase method the big M method is much more efficient or at least I feel that's the case you might have a differing opinion but the basic rundown of it is given here and I'll summarize it once more our purpose is to find an initial feasible solution so to do this in the presence of artificial variables using the two-phase method we have phase one reduce the value of the artificial variables to zero meaning that we want the, the minimum value for the sum of all the artificial variables present then after you have run this if and only if all artificial variables reduce to zero can we go on to the second phase and to start off the second phase we need to delete the columns of the artificial variables we need to restart the simplex method using the, sol the solution given to you by phase one and using the objective function that was originally stated in the problem and then phase two you rewrite the objective function as first stated you carry out row operations to ensure that your first iteration is in the proper form to be able to carry out the simplex method then we use the f the phase one solution write the table in proper form as I've stated and then you just carry out the simplex method as usual so it is a long-winded process and in this example you saw me transforming variables transforming these inequalities going on then over here and further transforming the problem so that we could actually start the phase one of the of the two-phase method we found a solution with all artificial variables being reduced to zero and what that enabled us to do is to start off the second phase again needing another transformation and then finally after all this work we obtained the optimal solution of Z with z having the minimum value of 5.25 and the optimal solution in terms of the decision variables x1 and x2 being 7.5 and 4.5 now this is probably one of the most long-winded and frustrating things to get used to it will probably take you quite a while to get used to calculating this efficiently and quickly in the tests but I hope that this video has helped you guys to better understand this concept thank you very much if you like the vi video leave a like and a comment Work Commander out.